The problem we're looking at today is how to decode this encrypted message. So first we'll t just take a look at the message itself and thankfully we have spaces in here uh, that appear to be separating uh, words because uh, we have different lengths uh, between the spaces. Uh, so that makes our task a, a lot easier. One thing I would look at is kind of the size of the word. So I look uh, right here at this letter D it appears to be a single letter word uh, and there's a repeat down here uh, of the same letter that appears to be a single letter word. So it appears to be a single letter substitution. Um, there's only a few uh, single letter words uh, usually uh, A and I so I would suspect it's one of those. Uh, it could be other vowels but, but probably uh, A or I if we're using uh, proper grammar. Uh, and then I'll look and we've got a couple of two letter words here. Uh, here's an EH, uh, WR, and another WR over here. Um, so again, there's only so many two letter words. And since we have a repeat, again, it looks like a single letter substitution. Um, and we have just happen to see here uh, a repeat uh, of this word. So again, it looks like a single letter substitution. So whatever Z happens to be, it's going to be the same throughout the whole message. Uh, and what I suspect uh, is this is a uh, shift. And so what a shift cipher does is for the letter A, uh, we just shift over a certain number of characters, uh, say three, uh, over and A would become D, B becomes E, uh, and C uh, becomes F, and so on down the alphabet. Once you get to the end, you shift back around. Uh, so Z shifts back uh, around the end of the alphabet and back down to C. Um, so that's a, a basic uh, shift cipher. And so first I want to show you this website, uh, decode.fr, uh, a French uh, website that has all kinds of different uh, decoding uh, algorithms. And this, this particular part of it says Caesar cipher, which is really uh, Caesar shifted by three. Um, this is actually handles more generic shifts um, b beyond just the three uh, shifted Caesar. Uh, what it will do is just paste our, our text in here uh, and say um, test for all possible. In other words, we're going to do a brute force method, uh, decrypt it, and it runs over here and it's telling us for plus three shift, uh, this looks like the most likely uh, uh, decoding for that. So uh, a really pretty nifty website if you're dealing with any kind of uh, decoding. Uh, so what we want to do now is do the same thing uh, programmatically. Uh, how would we write a similar program uh, to decode um, or check any number of shifts? Uh, so let's set this up. Um, first thing we'll do is just create our, our string with, with the uh, encrypted text in it. So I'll call this crypt text uh, and we'll just paste in the uh, uh, in, encrypted uh, text and we'll go through a sequence for this. And so our goal is to go through uh, all the characters here. Uh, and, f and find the, um, a set substitution, okay? And so we'll set up a loop, and I'm gonna set up uh, a loop called J, and so I'm gonna look at just the first character and say, um, I wanna go through uh, for what kind of shift? Well, uh, probably don't have to use zero here, um, but I'm going to say a shift of zero to start out with. Um, so J is pretty much my shift. So I'm going to go up until uh, less than uh, 26. So for the letter Z, I'm going to try to shift it zero times up to 25 times, uh, shifting it over to see uh, which letter it might line up with uh, in the alphabet. Uh, and then I'll add another loop uh, to go through all the rest of the characters. Um, so of course I'm going to do that by one, so I'm going to do J++, uh, and that'll be my initial loop is just to go through all uh, possible values for Z. Okay. 
uh, and then I'll set up my next loop and I'll do a for loop uh, integer uh, i equals zero uh, so this is going to represent the position uh, in this string so position zero would be this first character z uh, position one uh, or sub one in this string would be k and so on down the line okay and so we want to start at zero the first character and we're going to stop uh, at the crypt text okay uh, dot and for strings we have a nice uh, built-in function called length so we'll just say the length uh, of that string okay all the way to the end uh, and of course we'll go through each character so we'll do i uh, plus plus uh, and that'll be our uh, next loop uh, and I'll go ahead and uh, once we finish going through the whole thing I'm just going to go ahead and put in here uh, an inline okay uh, so in here once we find uh, or we find a possible uh, shift uh, we'll print out uh, each uh, character in here so next thing I want to do uh, is actually start the conversion so I'm going to create a variable ca called character I'm just going to use a um, and once I figure out my decoding for a uh, then I'm simply going to out output it to the screen okay and so I need to figure out how do I uh, shift over these characters well uh, one thing we're going to do is look at ASCII code and ASCII is just a representation of data in the computer system or it's one way to encode data uh, and so to make it easier for us we're going to use that character encoding uh, so for instance if we look at the decimal numbers um, 65 that would be a capital letter A uh, or if we look at uh, decimal 97 that would be uh, a lowercase a okay and since our, our text was encoded in lowercase we're going to deal with lowercase so this 97 becomes an important number because our, our alphabet essentially goes from 97 uh, up through uh, 122 for z um, 97 is not really an easy number uh, to deal with I would rather a be zero uh, so we'll look at how we're going to deal with that in a second. So let's let's take a look at how um, we can do that. So definitely we're going to be dealing with the crypt text, and we want to take a character at a time uh, based on this index i. So I'm going to do crypt text sub uh, i. Okay, so we're going to go from zero to the length of the text. So we're going to deal deal with one character uh, at a time. And what I'm going to do is add uh, JN so that's my shift remember so for each uh, single character I want to shift through um, all possible um, shift overs uh, to see whether it's you know three or possibly something else shifted over four characters uh, or something else entirely okay so I'll just have my, my shift in there and we'll go through all 26 to see if, in, if it's uh, a shift uh, cipher at all and then what I'm going to do for my ASCII code here because I really want to get uh, A uh, or, or the first character to be down uh, to zero uh, I'm going to subtract out remember my ASCII code uh, was 97 so what I'm going to do is get that a down to zero by subtracting uh, 97 from that and I'm shifting all the characters so Z will also go back down uh, but now if I subtract 97 from 97 ASCII a a is going to be zero and the reason I do that is to handle the uh, wraparound uh, so this is just one way of doing it I could have put an if statement in there saying uh, you know if, if it if it wraps around from Z you got to go back down to A I could just say if you go over a certain amount um, you know divide by that number but instead uh, I want to use a little bit different method so uh, what I'm going to do uh, is now that I have this take the integer value of that uh, because I want to do a mod uh, 26 uh, so if I end up with a value over 26 because remember we're, we're it's a shift code 
So as it shifts higher and it needs to wrap around, I'm just going to do a mod 26 and that's going to take care of, because remember mod is a remainder, if I go over 26 to 27, I'll get a remainder of 1, right? And so that gets me back down uh, in the range uh, of zero, uh, 0 to 25. Uh, I should be good. So that's what I'm expecting from alphabetical characters. Uh, the problem is for ASCII, once I do this and I shift it down, uh, that's great until I try to output it. Uh, and when I output it, I need it back uh, at the range of ASCII. So I need to add back in that number 97 once I create uh, or, or take care of the wraparound uh, with the mod 26. So I want to add back in uh, my 97 uh, after I take care of the wraparound. That'll put it back in ASCII format. Uh, so then I can convert this whole thing back to uh, character, okay? And so um, if you take it by piece by piece, this all makes sense. As, as one line of code looking at it initially may, may look a little, uh, a little weird, but all we're doing is shifting the number down, the ASCII code down 97. Uh, the mod 26 takes care of the wraparound, and then we're adding back 97 to put it in ASCII format and uh, putting it in character format so we can print it on the screen. Okay, and other thing I want to do here is take care of because if we look at the ASCII uh, value there for space, uh, space is way down here. Uh, value of 32 so that's not really within in the range I'm looking for and generally when you when you have in messages like this uh, the space is not really encoded there's no other character here so space is just space so I'm going to add an exception here uh, saying well if uh, the crypt text uh, sub i is not a space then do this decoding okay um, Otherwise, uh, I don't want to lose my spaces because if I stop now, uh, it will it will give me a, a different guess for the decodes here. Uh, but there won't I'll, I'll lose my spaces, so I want to put an else in here saying else. Uh, if we did have a space, um, just see out a space character uh, so that we can keep our spacing and our uh, message here. Okay, and so that should pretty much do it. Um, it, it should create essentially 0 through 25 different guesses at what the shift might be uh, and then we're going to have to look at it and see which one actually looks like uh, it might be uh, a decode. So let's compile and run this and it's taking a second here and we get this as a result so we get 25 different uh, uh, lines here and next to last here um, we have that same uh, sentence uh, what would be a better way to secure messages um, and describe a method uh, you would use to impose uh, encoded information uh, so that looks like I mean when we look at the rest of them none of the rest of them look like they make sense uh, also remember that that single letter character there's an A uh, so that's pretty much what we thought it would be uh, shifting over to make I doesn't doesn't really make an, uh, a readable sentence. So this looks like the answer, uh, and it looks like it was a shift of three. So it's in the last three. So it shifted over three. We had to shift back three or um, uh, to decode this. Um, and so we could probably clean this up a little bit uh, to maybe guess uh, which one of these automatically would be. Um, the decoded message and, and we might do that with a dictionary or something like that to say hey do we see any words uh, in the language we're using um, so right now a little bit easier for us to recognize that this would be uh, the decode um, so just a simple way dealing with ASCII um, and characters to uh, look at a few different ciphers like this uh, in this case a shift cipher uh, and a possible way to uh, brute force uh, decode it. So hopefully this was helpful uh, and hopefully a little bit of fun and I'll uh, see you next time.